particular. Uh, when we think about security, it's mostly like server side, firewalls, or some, I don't know, some injection of the server. But usually when people develop apps, and especially because they're doing SPAs and uh, they're doing a lot of front end work, usually they don't think about security, and that's bad. Okay, uh, first, let me introduce myself. I'm Ilya Verbitsky. I'm a uh, co founder of a company called WebSorting SRO. And um, our company helps people to bring like, the security for the e commerce startups. And we're working mostly in the e commerce field. And, okay. uh, first of all, why React? So, this is the survey uh, about like, a JavaScript world from 2018. And I, as you can see, that React is the most adapted framework nowadays. And like, uh, if you go to Medium or like, other web sources, you'll find out that people are talking about React a lot, but unfortunately, they're not talking too much about security in React, how to build secure apps. Let's take a look to OWASP. So OWASP is a, a rating, like a, the most popular security issues, and like they recently uh, created a new list. So as you can see, they're more or less the same. And uh, if you take a look to front end side, those are the two common issues, like cross-site scripting is like a common one in web world, and uh, uh, thank God in 2017 it's less popular, and uh, you know, we still use vulnerable components. And uh, I think that uh, if success issues came from uh, rating uh, line number six, number seven, because we have a lot of automated tools and like, even like some machine learning practices how to prevent developers writing bad code. But we have another issue, and uh, like broken authentication or sensitive data exposure, this is not about technology, it's more about people and it's more about your developers, how good uh, your code quality is and if you think about security in advance. So uh, let's go to this list and uh, see how these issues can appear in your front end SPAs in React and how we can avoid them. So let's start with broken authentication. This is a very, very common issue. Uh, because like, on, in any application, you have to log in, you have to authorize your users. And uh, sometimes you don't think about how to do it properly. And especially in uh, single page applications, you, uh, first of all, you have to think how you're gonna uh, measure your like, session, how you're gonna store your session. And there are not too many ways of doing this. Uh, the most common one is you still use cookies. So basically, you authorize uh, your, uh, your user, and if he gets a cookie, and then you just pass it this cookie all the time. But uh, it's OK if you, you have like a one standalone modest application. But if you're talking about microservices world, when you have a whole bunch of different services talking to each other, it's not that useful. So that's, why, uh, that's when uh, like GW, GWT tokens, so like other tech tokens came on board, and you can store your tokens in uh, web browser local storage. In this case, uh, you, you in your JavaScript code, code know what it is, and you have some payload, some data, and you can pass it to different microservices. Uh, but uh, web storage is not uh, that good from performance point of view. It's like synchronized calls, and it's uh, a bit slow sometimes. Another option is you can use index DB. That's a more modern uh, thing in web, web world. So it's uh, kind of a built-in database for in your web browser. It's asynchronous, so it works faster, but it has like, a really horrible interface. So usually you have some wrappers on top of that to make your code like, more or less readable. So uh, let's talk how we can insecure cookies. Uh, first of all, like when you get a cookie from a server, it has some parameters. and uh, First, you must set secure flag to be true, and it means that like the, your cookie will be passed only over HTTPS protocol, so you, you cannot steal it or sniff it. Uh, then you okay, you should set like HTTP only flag for the cookie. It means your browser from JavaScript does not have access to it, and uh, in this way you protect from XSS attacks. Uh, the problem is if you have some payload in this cookie that you want to use in your SPA then this approach is not going to work. Uh, this is a new flag uh, called uh, same site strict. It means if you have a cookie and uh, if you're passing it to your uh, secure uh, endpoint, uh, the cookie will be passed to the by browser only to a particular domain. And uh, 
In this case, you avoid CSRF attack. So, and uh, all modern browsers support it, and it's highly recommended to start using it. And then you can set up uh, expiration, uh, expiration uh, uh, date and time for your cookies as well. So please don't create like a long, like a one year living life cookies because then someone can steal them. The next, ap next approach is um, session management via JSON web tokens. I have to say that it's probably the most popular way how you do authentication or, uh, or session management uh, nowadays, especially in single page applications. So this is an open standard and it's a stateless token that uses with more authorization and for information exchange if you have like, uh, multiple REST endpoints and you want to pass some information about your like, user roles or something else, you can uh, keep it in, in the token. Uh, usually token looks like this. So it has three, three sections. The first section is information about what uh, algorithm you're using, like what is your signature algorithm for that because they're signed with a, with a private key or with a, your public and private key depending on, the, on your configuration. So a uh, header, it's uh, encryption information. Then you have payload, this is a gray one. And uh, then you have uh, your signature. Uh, you have uh, different options how you can sign the, uh, sign your tokens. You can use HMAC, and in this case, you use one uh, private key uh, that, that must be shared between all your microservices. Or you can use uh, RSA, uh, so you, you just have to uh, you just have to share your public key between uh, all your services, not private key. Okay. So uh, in JavaScript, there are a few useful libraries. Uh, if you want to work with JWT tokens, then you most probably will use JSON Web Token and NPM package. And um, in case you want to create a token where your payload is encrypted, uh, there probably there are rare cases when you want to do that, uh, because in this case you have to deliver your secret key to the uh, to the client that's not secure. So there's a standard called GW, uh, GWE and JWS. Uh, in this case, uh, there's a library to work with that. It's called Node uh, Jaws. And yeah, if you need some encryption inside JWT tokens, then you can play this. Uh, so, in uh, OWASP 2017, uh, we have another uh, vulnerability, uh, insecure deserialization. Uh, it means that, uh, let's say you have a token and you you can put some information to your payload, for example, user ID. And then uh, what happens on, on, the, on the server side, you send this token and you don't check your, for example, your signature, that is like why the algorithm was used. And uh, it means that a malicious guy can just go and change uh, the user ID and authenticate as a different user. And I honestly have seen it like a few times, so it's pretty bad. And JWC token uh, validation is, is vulnerable to these things. Uh, so uh, in, in the standard, uh, they have different headers uh, where you can specify your algorithm, uh, encryption algorithm, you can specify your expiration, uh, expiration or you can specify like who created the token. So uh, for example, out, it's a uh, it's an algorithm and uh, it could be symmetric or asymmetric. And then uh, in your payload, you can specify your expiration time, who, uh, your like domain name, who creates the token, and uh, you can do like, please use token like in 15 minutes or, or so. So to secure uh, ex the uh, rules for validation is, first of all, whenever a JWT token comes to you, make sure that a uh, valid algorithm is used. Uh, for example, you can create a token that its algorithm equals none. It means it's uh, uh, not signed and uh, uh, like a few years ago, it was a common security security issue. So even like a libraries, like why they use libraries, they didn't check algorithm out of the box. So you can create a token with algorithm none, and then uh, you the libraries pass the validation even if they require signature. You must specify uh, obviously like expiration point, uh, expiration time, and it should be uh, in case of JWT, it should be as short as possible, like 10, 15 minutes maximum. So, and uh, finally, 
oh, this is the table where you can see like different vulnerabilities and like our, how to protect against them. So uh, I think uh, since like same site uh, cookie flag is widely adopted, I'd probably recommend to use cookies nowadays if you don't need to do something on the client side. Uh, but make sure you use this same site flag because then you're immune to SRF as well. So bro uh, broken access control. Uh, that's another common family of uh, security issues when developers just uh, don't think about, uh, don't check all their permissions on the client side and the server side. Uh, in terms of React, if you check any like uh, enterprise, uh, more or less big enterprise application, you will see like spaghetti code like this. If your role is equals this, then render something. And uh, it's like if you have code like this, it's really hard to maintain it. Let's say you added, added new security role and you have to change uh, your interface based on that. It means you have to go through all your code and uh, apply the fix. There is a solution for that. Uh, there is a library called Castle. So Castle is a component where you have a one data store for your authorization policy. Uh, whenever you authenticate user, you get all his permissions and then you have like one data store and then you can have uh, React components that will render your applications based on your role. So you install it, uh, after, have, uh, after you install the package, you define your policy. So it will look like this, so it, it looks like a can view all. It means uh, the current user has read-only access to the system and nothing more. After you have the policy, you create a, as we call it, can, uh, can component. Uh, the can component uh, will look like this. So you just wrap your code uh, within the can and you specify here what action and what is your subject. So here we check if I can update a page, then we render an update link. Another problem with React is, uh, or with any SPA, that we we use uh, client-side routing. Uh, means that like we manage all the URLs uh, in the browser. And uh, uh, in case of React, uh, probably go-to solution is, uh, is the React router. Uh, but React router doesn't support your authorization features out of the box. Uh, this is the code of how you can uh, wrap your router with uh, with scan, with castle, and uh, check your permissions. And after that, your, code, your routing will look like this. So uh, if I can update a page, then I can go to update URL. Otherwise, your user will be redirected to like login page or access denied. So sensitive data exposure. Uh, it's that's another new family of vulnerabilities and uh, Reason is uh, developers don't usually don't think about how they're managing an encryption, how they work with encryption, or, for example, as we saw in the previous talk, uh, what data we're going to expose to public. Okay, so in case of like a any web development, please make sure that you use the S7 tailored encryption uh, nowadays, and uh, you now you don't need to even to pay for the SSL certificate. Just go and use Let's Encrypt. And uh, if you're talking about client side, uh, modern browsers are smart enough uh, to encrypt the data uh, uh, on the client. So there is a WCC standard uh, called Web Crypto API. So uh, it provides you a symmetric and asymmetric encryption. So like uh, you can do RSA, uh, elliptic curves, or IS encryption on the client. And uh, if you have to deal with all, uh, elder browsers, you can use uh, Stanford Library. And uh, I did some performance testing. It's, it's, it's quite good. It's like quite performant, especially like, uh, if you're running it on Node.js. Uh, it provides you almost the same performance as OpenSSL uh, built-in encryption algorithm. OK, uh, cross-site scripting uh, is a lovely one that is uh, still alive, unfortunately. Uh, that's a big, like, long topic, and you can talk a few hours how you can hack React. 
uh, because it's not that uh, secure as you, uh, as you may think of. Uh, but let's uh, concentrate on what, how we can prevent our developers writing bad code and preventing uh, big success. Uh, if you create your application using uh, 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 create React app, let's say a go to solution for React, then uh, it will bring ESLint uh, by default. And this is a list of plugins that can help you. Uh, there's a plugin for XSS. Uh, uh, there's a plugin that will check the security, some uh, common security issues, and uh, Markdown and React as well. Uh, I added Markdown here because, you know, like sometimes developers think, okay, I'm not going to write any like JavaScript code or HTML code on uh, on my front end. I will just get a mar Markdown file. Markdown is just text. It's on HTML, so I'm secure. Uh, unfortunately, that's not the case, and I saw some examples why, uh, because Markdown is converted to your uh, to HTML anyway. And uh, whenever Markdown is rendered in React, uh, usually uh, it does not apply HTML uh, encoding. So it means whatever is rendered uh, as a Markdown out uh, Markdown rendered output will go to your browser, and uh, in you can add your like some malicious JavaScript or malicious code into Markdown as well, and this is like another sample that I've seen in, like, in real life projects when you have malicious code coming from Markdown and then rendered on the browser. Uh, using components with known vulnerabilities. Okay, uh, so it's 2019, so the, the good news are we have tools uh, that can audit other systems and uh, after recent, sec recent security uh, problems in NPM when some modules were uh, was like hacked and uh, there was some, some bad code was added to them, uh, NPM came with uh, this tool called NPM audit. So whenever you do NPM install, uh, NPM itself will check all your dependencies against security database and uh, let you know something is broken or not, or, well, and they also are trying to fix it. If you run NPM audit fix, if it's possible to fix, if um, the fix version is just a minor change for the library you're using, then it will apply the changes. Otherwise, you have to do it manually. And there is <coughs> there's another uh, product called Snick. Uh, it's uh, also quite popular, and it's not just about JavaScript, it's also, I think it's, uh, they do like Ruby and PHP as well. So it's a big giant database of uh, vulnerable components and uh, you can uh, check your code against it. So it was like a really short brief introduction about uh, what you can do right now uh, to make your React application secure. Uh, as a summary, um, I would suggest you first of all uh, think about risk management because security is also about all about risk management. If you're, uh, if you have a, uh, your website where you just post your cat photos, then probably you're not going to spend like a few hundred thousand dollars on security. But if you're building a, a big e-commerce portal, then you have to think about security uh, a lot and you have to have a budget for that. Uh, also, uh, please invest into secu uh, security trainings for developers because as you can see, um, like the common issues are not because of tools, but because of developers. Because developers are, don't think, you know, are not thinking about like, how the application might be hacked, and probably they even don't know how the application might be hacked. Uh, so education, I think, is like it's very important. Uh, <coughs> also, if you can avoid writing uh, code related to security, please do it. If there is components, uh, just use it, because most of these components uh, came from security companies, and they audited it and probably the uh, security companies know what they're writing. And uh, yeah, don't trust any input. Uh, it, I'm talking, here I'm talking not about just talking about the like, user input, but also from the database. Uh, for example, there was, some, uh, there was a case when uh, some, uh, some markdown came from a third party system and they came to the database and then it was rendered on the website. And uh, in the data stream was uh, some malicious code so basically, uh, yeah, you, you you never know where you, have, uh, where you can get the malicious code. And yeah, automate. If you can, uh, yeah, 
write automate as much as you can. Like use tools automation. Yeah. That's it. Thank you. Very, very short introduction.